Wendy Williams' son is making new claims about the star's health. In the Lifetime documentary about the former daytime talk show host, Williams' son says her recent dementia diagnosis is, quote, alcohol-induced. This is Wendy speaks out for the first time since the announcement of her diagnosis. Eva Pilgrim has more. It's clear my aunt needs help. And the biggest concern is the people around him taking advantage of the situation. This morning, stunning new claims from the family of Wendy Williams, who was recently diagnosed with aphasia and dementia. I'm, I'm afraid that she could die. Wendy's son and only child Kevin Hunter Jr. speaking candidly in the new Lifetime documentary about his mother, saying her condition is alcohol-induced. Tell me about those doctors and what you learned. So I think they said it was alcohol-induced dementia. Wendy's care team revealing last week that she was diagnosed with primary progressive aphasia and frontotemporal dementia, also known as FTD. Aphasia affects a person's ability to communicate, and FTD is the most common form of dementia for people under the age of 60. There is no evidence to directly link alcohol and frontotemporal dementia. So about 40% of frontotemporal dementia cases are genetic, and the other 60% of the time, we're not really sure why it happens. Wendy's niece and anchor for our affiliate WPLG, Alex Finney, sat down with our Deborah Roberts ahead of her aunt's public health acknowledgement. As a family, were you told that? So I did not see that diagnosis. I only heard that through family. Now, I know Kevin said it, but I personally didn't see it. It does make sense that she definitely cognitively has some things that are off. Does it lean the way of it being dementia? I think it could. Driver, uh -huh. I said go past the Wendy Williams show. Wendy's guardian, who was court appointed in 2022 after her bank alleged she was incapacitated, suing Lifetime just days before the release of a doc, a judge allowing the premiere. Some people are going to look at this and say, this is exploitation. She's being exploited. How could they do this? But I will say this, first and foremost, my aunt is the executive producer of this documentary. And she said, now is the perfect time because I want to take ownership of my story. She's got a point. She's an icon. She's a legend. And she is the moment. Wendy Williams addressing her fans for the first time since the documentary release, saying in part, your response has been overwhelming, adding, I continue to need personal space and peace to thrive. Please just know that your positivity and encouragement are deeply appreciated. Williams' family says while they have spoken to her, they still don't know where she is, but that she sounds like she's doing better. Our thanks to Eva Pilgrim for that report. And now I want to bring in TV critic at Variety, Aramide Tanubu, joining me now for more on this. Aramide, you wrote an article about the docuseries saying it feels, quote, invasive at best and predatory at worst. So what reaction is this docuseries getting from viewers now especially after Wendy's team shared her diagnosis? There's definitely been mixed reviews. I think that Wendy is someone who has a lot of energy behind her, knowing what she's done in terms of her career. So a lot of people agree with what I said, that it felt very exploitative and very unnecessary. And other people, unfortunately, feel like it's kind of just her karma. She's always been someone who's extremely outspoken, who called, called it like it is. And they're just saying like, hey, this is kind of what you've done all of your life. So now the, the chickens have come home to roost, unfortunately. Wendy's court-appointed guardian sued Lifetime just days before the release of this documentary, but the judge allowed the premiere to go ahead. What do you make of that? I think it's very strange that The Guardian waited until 72 hours before the documentary premiered in order to sue, if that's what they wanted to do. Um, from the documentary, it looks like The uh, Guardian, at the time that it was filmed from, I believe, about May 2022 to April 2023, was very hands-off and kind of separated from Wendy in, in many ways. So it just seemed insincere, in my opinion, that they would wait um, only three days ahead of the premiere to do this, knowing that the series was going to come out. We've known about three or four weeks that Lifetime was planning on doing this. So I'm not sure what that motivation was, other than the fact that the um, Guardian looks very poor in the documentary. Now, actor Bruce Willis's family has been very public about his aphasia diagnosis, saying they're trying to raise awareness about the condition. 
Now Williams is saying that she hopes that others may benefit from her story, too. Do you think this documentary could help in those efforts to spread awareness? I think it does help in that terms. I just don't think it was necessary. I think there's other ways to spread awareness. I do agree with the family in saying that like, there's no reason why one of her family members, she has a living brother, a sister, um, and a father could have stepped in and been her guardian. I'm not sure. I understand why Wells Fargo stepped in, but I'm not sure why the judge would appoint someone that no one in her family knows. The fact that they don't have contact with her is very unsettling to me. So yes, we're raising a well awareness about this illness but in this manner is extremely concerning to me. All right, TV critic at Variety, Aramide Tanubu, thank you. Thank you so much. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.